Hey everybody! Hi! Welcome to TFT Tarot for Today, Divine Dabblings with O'Brien, oh, me Banshee, and it's a special video presentation. We interrupt the constant media barrage news cycle <laughs> to cover something in the news. And of course, this is not new. From time to time we have dipped our hands, tarot or otherwise, into the fortunes of various topics that seem to be quite interesting political. to many people around the world, political or otherwise. We covered world issues. Brexit, we covered things about the uh, original COVID. So world here we predictions. Are. World predictions, all of that. The Super Bowl predictions. So now we're so, looking at a recent thing that has occurred. It is... Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. <laughs> well, recently what has happened it is, is... TFT examines the crisis in the U.S. Democratic Party. Bravo. Thank you. Oh, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> the crisis in the U.S. Democratic Party is who will be their candidate for president. There seems to be some question now, even though it seemed like Joe Biden was going to be... Yes, as I was trying to say, after the uh, poor debate from literally three weeks ago, or nearly three weeks ago, uh, the hue and cry for uh, Joe to step down, or for someone to tell him to step down, or to offer replacements, has only uh, waxed and waned, but comes back bigger and bigger, and so now even, you know, Hollywood people are stepping into the fray and other people uh, with newspaper uh, editorial powers. Well, and it also seems as though, you know, when you see news reports talking to voters, voters still seem to be all in on Biden, the ones that who would vote for Biden. A lot of them do seem to be that way. So it seems as though it's the party elites, the media, and the um, the money, the donors, the campaign donors, the it, big ones. Is it possible at all that this is just about grabbing attention, you know, the advertising dollars spent on this great question, will he, won't he, whatever. It's like politics in general. And is there serious uh, ageism going on? Or are there real legitimate concerns here about Biden's health? Well, we decided we'll ask the tarot some of these pressing questions. We've got eight questions, and we're going to run through them. We're going to do three cards per question, and we're going to reshuffle, I think, after each question, because we would, because these questions are pretty standalone, mm -hmm. and we would really like to see if cards come up again. Right. It could only mean, you know, extra uh, attention. So shall we? Shall we? Maybe we'll take turns shuffling for each question, too, to save time. Okay. So long as we, you know, shuffle them good, each one of us. So your question, the first one, Mr. O, is how do Democratic voters feel right now overall about Biden as their candidate? You know, in other words, do they still feel comfortable voting for him? Or is there, you know, would they prefer someone else? What's the climate feel like with the voters? And did you with mention, the Democratic Did you voters? mention the deck we're using? Oh, no, I did not. You can go ahead and show it. Okay, we decided to use, because this is very dramatic stuff, you know, we decided to use the Pulp Tarot. <laughs> for these, these questions because, you know, it just seems right. very sensational what's going on at this umpteenth hour in doesn't the campaign it, cycle. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? So we're just going to each shuffle for the By questions. the way, right. the Pope Tarot is by Todd Elcott. Okay. All right. Three cards, Mr. O. First card is the Nine of Pentacles, upright. Followed by the Three of Wands, reversed. This is very interesting already. Followed by the Page of Wands, reversed. I Well, you want me to start or you want to go? Go right ahead. 
Well, let's look at that Nine of Pentacles to start with there. It seems to me the voters are kind of comfortable with Joe. I see this not the Democratic voters. Let's separate that from other voters. For overall, I'm sure there's differences, but they seem really comfortable with keeping him in the race. However, I feel like they really are concerned about the future. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty all around all of this, and I think it is affecting the voters. And the Page of Wands reverse could indicate to me that they are concerned that maybe keeping Joe, you know, maybe deciding early on, you know, beginnings early on that Joe was going to be their candidate in twenty for 2025 going forward wasn't the best of choices. You know, this is a beginning. This could be something that could fail. But they do feel comfortable with keeping him despite the uncertainty, I feel. What's that second card? The second card is the Three of Wands reverse, which is why I talked uh, about uncertainty. Okay, well, when I look at the Page of Wands reverse, I'm also wondering, too, if that this is saying that the Democratic voters sort of look down on or don't want to feel influenced necessarily by the bad news here, the bearers of the bad news. But oh. In most other ways, I see everything you're saying as being pretty correct. I see what you're mm -hmm. saying there. So in other words, they don't believe the bad press about yes. Biden. That's the way of looking at it. And there's a truth there. But, you know, we do know there are people who have some concerns. Maybe that's coming from the swing voters, which is our next question. <laughs> All right. So shall we? Go right ahead. Are you happy with that? I like that. I like that, too. It seemed to tell a story. And I liked your t twist there on the Page of Wands, because the Page of Wands is about news, good or bad. And considering it was reversed, da da da. All right. Well, the Three of Wands is sort of uh, wobbly in the sense that maybe people are now feeling like, do they stick with their plan? Do they catch the next wave? Or do they stick with this wave? That kind of idea. It could so mean like that they too. will be fungible. I have a feeling most Democratic voters, because they are fear of, you know, the other candidate running, uh, would, pass, would probably go along and vote for it anyway. But why change something that the voters are comfortable with? So, let's see. Let's go forward. We've got some interesting questions. Ahead. Question two is, how do swing undecided voters feel about Biden right now as a candidate they would vote for? Would they vote for him? How are they feeling? And, you know, from the polls, from, well, see, and that's it. That was another thing I would have brought in the beginning if you hadn't talked so much. Ah, ah, ah. But the polls, you know, I don't trust the polls. The polls are very deceptive. They're polling everything now from who will replace Biden before they replace him. Will you vote for Kamala? Would you vote for Hillary again? Oh my goodness, they're all over the place. So I don't trust the polls. I'd rather trust my tarot cards. <laughs> to tell me how people are feeling. <sighs> it's just one hot mess right now. All right. Well, Mr. O, let's see what I get here. I'm going to be careful here. Okay, swing voters. Well, we have, this interestingly enough, the six of swords upright. Talk about swinging the swing voters, swing right? Swing voters could definitely <laughs> decide that they want to look for something that's less meddlesome, troublesome. The seven of cups upright. So the swing voters, the independent voters, maybe are playing a role here, as you can see. Temperance reversed. They are not as likely to want to say, let's stay the course, let's keep the balance. They may be thinking about their pie in the sky, that's the Seven of Cups, you know, the idea that maybe there's something better. And they may express some sense of a willingness to want to leave what seems to be bothersome, troublesome, etc. 
I think the swing voters are bothered by this, you know, the ones that, and also maybe those voters that are never Trumpers even for that matter. Independents. I, independents, yeah. people now who have, you know, either split from the party or have been independent all along, and those who go back and forth. I feel here there's some imbalance. There's some, there's, there's a definite split amongst how they feel about this. And the Seven of Cups up right indicates they haven't decided. Maybe they're confused by the fact that there could be even more options out there. Maybe now... We want them there to be. Well, they do want you think? Kick, yeah. Okay, or that I that could represents go with that. a gestalt of, of possibilities between this collective. I think they just want things to settle down, though. And so if it means moving to another candidate because things are so, you know, for the Democrats to move to another candidate, um, maybe that's the case. Well, one... Let's be nakedly political here and just ahead. suggest that, of course, because they are swing voters, because they are independent voters, they are not so wedded to the idea of being a, a Democratic voter anyway. And so this clearly sort of represents the easiest to be able to be fungible here. I feel they're looking at all their options, mm -hmm. and they may just be yep. waiting for this chaos to settle down that could be that might be what it's saying here because they're trying to figure out what the best way to move forward is they know that they don't want probably they don't would prefer neither of these candidates you're too kind <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about that all but right question three no i think we're done okay here. all right true? yeah i guess we've processed it so much it's cheese. Do you want to go with question three? Question three. I did. Are outside forces, that is forces outside the Democratic Party, the Democrat Party, trying to coerce or manipulate the party into replacing Biden? Now, that's a question after my own heart, being a Scorpio and being suspicious and cynical <laughs> about most things. Well, you know, one wonders about the New York Times and the person who wrote the article, the motivations. But then again, one wonders what the Democratic, uh, what Biden's uh, White House staff is covering for him, or just Jill Biden covering for him, or are outside influences trying to manipulate this either way. And it seems to me that, you know, it looks like there's a lot of interest trying to ensure that Biden doesn't run against Trump for some reason. Is it because they're afraid of losing to Biden? Or is it Trump forces or people want to see you know, Trump win? Or is it people who are genuinely concerned that Biden cannot be Trump? Well, I tend to believe the former in one form or the other. I sort of think that um, oh. polling, some polling does suggest that Trump is going to lose big and they're trying to manipulate people into voting for him somehow or not voting at all. Or is it the media that wants to keep us in their grips and making this, as dr this election as dramatic as possible all right. for those rating points? This could have been a straight up yes or no question too, by the way. Yeah, but go could ahead. Have been. It's the Four of Pentacles reversed. <laughs> it's the Ace of Pentacles. Follow oh, right. the money. Oh my gosh. It's money. Three of Swords. And reversed. it's the Three of Swords reversed. Wow. Well, perhaps somebody wants to heal things. And of course, that could be more from their perspective of feeling that they are now damaged goods in some sense in the, the voters' minds. That's the Three of Swords reversed. But Who's damaged goods? You said they. You mean Biden? The other party of the question, you know. Oh. Are the forces outside. So I could see forces outside feeling like they need to change their own narrative to make it feel like they're healing, they're coming back together, they're good, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, the other cards seem to indicate some interesting relationships maybe with the idea of money, intersectionality and money, you know, you have the four of pentacles reversed there, and that could indicate that maybe people are willing to spend money or to use money or to use material forces in some ways to try to get their will or to move things, and of course the ace of pentacles, maybe that suggests, of course, that if 
mission is successful, that opens up some avenue of income or resources or whatever for the persons who are invested, who are stakeholders in this process if we're talking about that. So am I answering the question yes or no? I don't know. I don't know that you really answered it, but maybe you did. It's a very vague question, and yes, we could have done a yes-no for that. Maybe we want to do one. But at any rate, I would say follow the money. This is the bottom line here. You know, somebody wants to gain money. People maybe don't want to lose money and so you know this may have to do with the donors this may have to do with the people who are big money and this may also have to do with the candidates in the democratic party who are afraid of losing their financial backing if donors bail on biden you know or if donors don't feel biden is viable so i wonder here if there isn't some financial coercement follow the money i think it's really clear here i think that the healing is how do you you know the healing might be here to just say they're trying to do what's, do what's right. in their own best <laughs> interests no, to heal themselves, I feel here. So I feel here they're worried that, you know, this could have a very, if Biden runs, this could have a very negative outcome for them. And why? Is it because he might win? Or is it because he might lose? That's the question. You know, because will Biden and if the Democrats took control of the House and Senate, would they tax all the rich? Would they not be happy about that? Okay, so there's a lot of ulterior. This is a very open-ended question, I feel. I would say there is definitely outside influence trying to manipulate this to the best of their ability. And, you know, they've weakened the Democratic Party's resolve into... Um, into supporting their own candidate for president. Very nice. All right. Question four. How would Biden do running against Trump after all of this drama? So this is, of course, assuming Biden would survive all of what is going on here. Right, this is a, keeps, a step forward or beyond. It keeps getting more difficult by the day with things that are coming out. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we wanted to do this reading now to see before, you know, things go one way or the other way. Because right now, it really is still in big limbo land. All right. Pick up my cut. Okay. Well, we have the Page of Wands upright. Interesting that's back, but it's upright this time. The Seven of Pentacles is reversed. Wow. Oh. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> and it's the devil. Oh, Dark Brandon. Right. Dark of course. And it is back. <laughs> but of course, a lot of times, you know, some people feel that that other uh, candidate may represent some of those ideas. This there. isn't about the other candidate. True this enough. is well, we did say if it would he would defeat right. Trump. I think well, we could do that. Let's look at this a couple of different ways, Mr. O. Let's take our time and relax <laughs> with this one. Because how would Biden do running against Trump after all this drama? Well, guess what? There's good news. It would be like a new beginning for him if he can overcome this. You know, cause he, you know if he actually holds his own so and makes it to run, he could be stronger because of this, actually. Mm -hmm. And with the Seven of Pentacles here, it indicates to me an attitude of, let's get back to work, Democratic party on supporting your yeah. candidate and not there trying to go. bring him down mm -hmm. there you go. so they would probably rally around him at this point against the evil <laughs> well that's one way of looking the at evil it. trump that is one way i have another way okay I'll let I, you go I, I agree with those ideas though. i think that the page of wands expresses the idea good news we're able to work with this we're able ah. to do this um you know the the uh 
What is that, the Pentacles? That is the Seven of Pentacles reversed. Right. Uh, we're able to get back to work, just like you said. Now, the devil does bring in the idea, like, if, if of course, this is pertaining to Biden running against Trump, maybe this is really saying that he sort of is that little master, that little magister, that other name mm. for the devil sometimes. <laughs> I like that. But I had another thought that's a little bit more... So, for example, yes, they might be able to accept it, new beginning, they get to work on supporting him, but it's possible Biden's health could play a factor, right? The devil is things that confine and restrict. That's and true. so I wonder here if that could, it could be that. It also could be that, you know, even though they're ready to get back to work and support Biden now, and that's great news, you know, according to this, you know, it may be a struggle trying to break free from some of all of this negativity that has happened here, too. Another thing I see, though, is that the devil certainly has its possible uh, ideas with politics. And so I, I see the sense of maybe this being the idea that maybe how would he do? He would do so well that maybe he would change a lot of orientation of the lower tickets that are going on, you know, that maybe there would be a sweep of some sort. I'm not sure I can do agree with you on that necessarily, but... That's why it's the devil. It, <laughs> the devil is, is in, in the, the details. details. <laughs> well, serious business. I think here I would say that he potential... I'm, you know, this doesn't really give me a good... You add some outcome stuff that, you know, things could go very well. Um, I'm on the fence. I'm thinking that they will get... They would get back to work and rally around him, but is it enough? Is it enough because of just everything that's been, you know, that has been oppressing them now because is of this Is he situation? trapped by his image? Is yeah. he restricted because yeah. of what people The image are? that people put on him now. Right. Exactly. So, Are those chains really his chains? Are we talking about uh, the devil being a projection of him in terms of where this is going? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. You ready for the next I one? I do believe the vapors. Yes, how, I am. How is it me? Okay. I need to explain something, though, before All this right. question. Okay. I did not want to assume what candidate would replace Biden at this point. You know, there's a lot of talk. There have been polls. Hillary, Gavin Newsom. Of course, the obvious one, which would be Kamala Harris. A Gretchen Whitmer's name has come up. I didn't want to go there right now. And so what we did was we made it more generic, and we're asking the question as... How would another candidate do against Trump so late in the election cycle? And Isn't when we say couple? another can Oh, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. And when we say another candidate, we're speaking of a Democratic candidate. Right. I so, should have put that in there. You know, of the various possibilities that Banshee mentioned, you know, just in the generic sense, how would any other candidate do against Trump? At this point in time. I know. Because it is later it's for a switch. It's so uh, the media seems to be crying for a story, frankly, for to me. And of course, uh, Therein lies the peril. I don't know that this should really be happening in this manner, but we want to ask that question. You know, when we think about aging out, Chuck Grassley in the Senate is 90 years old. Bernie Sanders is 89. All people, people on the Supreme Court are aging. I don't want this to be an aging thing, frankly. <clears throat> the chariot is reversed. Uh -oh. Boy, this Somebody is doesn't almost, know how to oh, step man. on the gas. <laughs> What's this? The Eight of Swords. Okay. The Eight of Swords is reversed. That's a good sign. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. King of Cups. Well. How, well, you were talking about this. I love it. Can I go? Go ahead. Because <laughs> I will bring up what you said to me. Oh, All dear. right. 
So, <laughs> another candidate may really have trouble getting themselves, you know, going. Uh, you know, people trust Biden. The Democrat, you know, the voters, not the people with the money, not the people with the political clout and influence, but voters seem to like Biden. And so, for them to get the trust now of, for any one candidate that would just walk in from the Democratic Party, even Kamala, to get the support of the mass majority of voters, this might be a tough sell. And with the Eight of Swords reversed here, I feel that whoever this is has to have a lot of confidence, has to show a lot of bravado and courage in order to pull this off. We can't be, we can't be doubtful. You know, and we can't portray a picture of desperation when we're making this move because otherwise people will not be convinced to support this candidate. But as Mr. O and I were talking about things and about whether people would rally around Kamala Harris, he said to me they would probably more likely trust a male to come into this race than Kamala. And, and that you know, was, there's a truth to this. That was really influenced by some some political writings I was looking at, some people talking about the, the misogyny that still is present and everything, and that maybe to some degree this is the strategy against, uh, you know, saying, okay, you're right, everybody, Kamala should run instead of Joe. You know, that was the strategy is that Joe or the, the ticket would lose a lot of male voters because of their ingrained sense of misogyny. So since there seems to be a lot of inertia here, and maybe the inertia is that the Democrats really don't have the heart to make this change on Joe, ultimately. We'll ask some more questions that about that be. later. That's possible here. But the thing is, it may be hard for this candidate to get off the ground unless they show incredible, you know, um, strength of character and resolve and courage and don't allow, you know, this to... to Pull them out. And also, they must show the heart and soul that Joe Biden has. They have to be that kind of person. Mm. Because in a way, I see That's people him. looking yeah. at Joe Biden as this kind of guy. He is the a King Scorpio, and that's a water sign. So Somebody who's always trying to look for compromise. Somebody who's always trying to find, you know, that sweet spot. This is so him. So I'm just saying that I really think they would need somebody with some of those characteristics. Now, I think there's a wobble point with that uh, middle card, the okay, yeah, Eight yeah. of Swords there, and I think the idea behind that is maybe some people want somebody to be brave enough to shatter the illusions of being, you know, unable to produce, but maybe there's that wobble point of saying, like, well, are we still ready for that you know some people are saying like oh are we holding ourselves to this oh. or are we freeing ourselves of this some interesting points there in all other ways i tend to agree with you that chariot is sort of providing a lack of gas a lack of motivation uh that may seem to be crippling that candidate to some degree and maybe it's because of that perception of whether or not they are being held back or not and maybe there's this comparison to Biden. Maybe this is the idea is how do they measure up to Biden and how people felt he ran the country. Interesting, Interesting stuff indeed. So and I'm sure tarot readers who are watching this will have their own impressions about these cards. So, is on it my the, shuffle now? Yes, it is. Well, we are on. All right. Will Biden drop out of the race before the Democratic Convention in August? Yes or no? <laughs> Should we do a yes or no? I'm game if you are. Should we both shuffle then? Yes. All right. Shuffle first. So this will be our yes or no for the evening, I think. <laughs> right. <laughs> because We're, even though the other ones might be, well, question eight, eight could be answered that way. We're not going to do it that way for that one, no. So you can tell we were kind of preparing this on the fly. <laughs> we just felt really with the time, everything is speeding up one way or another. We needed to get a beat on this now. 
So, will he drop out of the race before the Democrats? And by all means, give us some decent feedback. Do you want us to do more things like this? We sort of have it within ourselves to want to occasionally approach, you know, these issues. We did that with a weekly formatted show that we didn't feel was really hitting our own expectations even. That was called Your Weird Week. We like doing it. Oh, rest assured, Mr. O, there is another reading that will have to happen soon. And that yes. one is about the other party, but they've already chosen their candidate. So, so we, the questions may be just a little bit different. Some of them will be similar. All right. I'll count them, but if you want to pick them up. All right. All right. Leaning towards no, it is not a definite no. But two cards we had in previous readings have come up again the same way. So let me put the last card down first just to show you it's the one ace. We look for aces in this reading and to determine the, the yes to determine the yes or no. And so that is just only getting one ace indicates that it's leaning towards no, they will not replace. Joe Biden, he will before, not drop out. or he won't drop out. That's right. He won't drop out before, before the, the Democratic convention. convention. And the other cards we've got, well, let me put them down first. The devil came first. I'm just going to put it sure, as fine. they came. And the nine of pentacles was the second card. Upright. Now remember, brand. earlier in the reading when the devil came up, I said yes. Dark Brandon. <laughs> Dark Brandon's not giving up. Which is a nickname <laughs> that the far right has for uh, the president. He feels that he is the best choice. That he deserves this chance to run again against Trump. And that he's not, you know, he's comfortable staying where he's at. And also, I think it's because he feels the voters back him. He feels he can win. And He's the devil the, comfort. the devil here could be that, you know, he is really trying to control this here. Yeah. Um, he wants to have control. And um, it could also mean here that maybe the Democrats realize their fortunes are tied to him. Well, the devil traditionally maybe uh, exerts the idea of, you know, some sense of allegiance to, towards, yeah. you know, a, a goal, a person, a situation. Uh, and so the idea maybe that, you know, for better or worse, we're stuck with him, you know, as, as that candidate. Wow. Nice. That was really interesting. Very to get much. get those cards again. All right. I think you were wise to select this deck to use. Thank it. you. I love the dramatics of it. <laughs> that is awesome, isn't it? That was a good choice. Thanks. Right. So now card seven, as we near the end, what will happen at the Democratic Convention? What kind of chaos? Oh, wait. Jeez, we might need a ten card spread for that. <laughs> I don't know if we'll get any clarity out of this. We'll see. I predict chaos. You know, Democratic conventions over Republican ones, at least in the past, have always been kind of contentious little events. There's always some drama going on. So what else is new that we've got another big drama here? Um, at any rate, let's see what's going on there. It's in Mr. O's hands. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Are you kidding me? I am not. It's the Nine of Pentacles again. Hmm. Well, I guess there's so much for shuffling that I just didn't quite accomplish. Gosh, eh? Mr. O. The Ace of Cups upright. It was meant to be. And the Hanged Man reversed. I see. What's going to happen? I think that the Democrats, one way or another, will be comfortable with the choice they have made. They will support it. Um, they will. Um, they will. They're hoping to prosper from it. And you know, they seem like after, once the convention is done, they're going to be in a much happier place. They're going to feel like they fulfilled a mission here. They got something accomplished and done that is very pleasing to them. And it may involve a sacrifice. Sacrifice. Is it a sacrifice well, or an unwillingness to sacrifice? The fact that maybe Joe Biden wouldn't give up is possible, so everybody rallied with him? Or is it some other type of sacrifice? The people who were opposed will relinquish their, or Joe Biden maybe will capitulate to pressure at the convention. But it doesn't sound like pressure here. See, that's right. what's bothering you. You know, uh, I hate to get too flowery, but the Ace of Cups sort of sounds like they fall in love all over again, i.e. the convention with, with their reality. They fall and in line. They fall in line, they fall in love, and once again, I feel there's a wobble or inflection point with the hangman because maybe it is about the choice of a sacrifice or sticking to not being a sacrifice. So, right. In all other ways, though, the cards play as they do. You know, the Nine of Pentacles sort of says, as the convention happens, is that what is, you know, everyone's comfortable. Everybody feels there's... There's something there. But let's talk about some of these aspects of the hanged man okay, here. Okay, let's do that. Because doesn't he also indicate this idea of, well, I'm coming off the tree now of thinking about things and wondering what we should do. And we finally have done something or we're coming down now to take action. So maybe all this indecision and wobbling back and forth is going to come out and be cleared up at the convention. As the acceptance of things and the love affair going forward. Well, whether, whether Biden agrees to step right. down or not. Right, there is acceptance so that if it actually did happen, you know, every even Biden himself would say, I agree. Yeah, it seems like they'll come together one way or another. So what does this mean for our final, well, our final card, we didn't want to do an election prediction not yet. per se yet. <laughs> um, no, it's not time. I was going to wait till after the conventions to do that. And Let's do it on Halloween. <laughs> that's scary. I enough. think that's too close. I want to do it a little bit before that. But maybe at the beginning of October. <laughs> but let's just say this. We're going to end to figure out here. Biden's mental and physical is Biden mentally and physically fit enough to serve as president in 2025? And I want to just look at three cards to look at some of the factors here. There's all kinds of questions about this, and you know, and some of it does border to me, in my opinion, on ageism, and others are very valid. I have no problem with you know questioning somebody's mental acuity um, and their physicality, but you know we got to be careful here because like I said there's a lot of elderly people who are still in office are we just going to start kicking people out based on certain things and mostly political expedient things or does there have to be a real relevant reason so I know it's your shuffle well it's my shuffle oh, sure. Ooh, I get this question oh dear So let's just see what some of the factors are surrounding this. And this is not really saying, you know, this is just asking if he is mentally and physically fit enough to be the president. Ten of Pentacles reversed. Oh, 
Knight of Wands reversed. Nine of Pentacles again, again. a three-peat. And there are different cards with it this time. And it's reversed this time. Okay. Nine of Pentacles. <clears throat> you know, it almost feels like all of this was for nothing. Well, you no, know, not necessarily. <laughs> I see some interesting factors here in this. So maybe we will want to do a yes-no to follow up. I'm just... We'll see where I'm going with this first and see what you think. The Ten of Pentacles reversed indicates to me there are people who really aren't sure he's in it for the long haul. But does that mean he can't run? We can't predict the future when somebody is going to live, how long somebody's going to live, or when they're going to die. So, I mean, you know, maybe it's a factor, but can we really? I think some people here with this Ten of Pentacles reversed are concerned about his longevity because often that's what this card is about long-term planning is he really going to be in it for the long haul well you know what we have a backup for that we have a vice president should he die in office or whatever happens that's why um, it's a ticket the knight of pentacles reversed he's slowed down he has definitely slowed down. Uh, he's got to be more careful about his health. I think these things are pretty clear. He's not going to be as swift either mentally or physically as he used to be. And that is a factor. Does it? Is it enough to exclude him from the presidency? Well, maybe there could have been better choices. Maybe there were other things that could have been done. But isn't it a little late in the game to consider that now? I mean, I'm just throwing that out there as an aside. But maybe things, this card can also say that maybe things aren't perfect, but maybe you aren't appreciating what you have. I'm going to have to go along with that for the most part, uh, and and for expediency's sake, the idea of the ten really is, of course, you know, a sense of completion that could imply an ending or maybe not. And so, with the ten of pentacles reversed, there it really does feel like maybe there's a sense that there's a stability question in people's minds. Um, but the but we know that in terms of where he's at, there is support. Even if it is, you know, hard. You know what I find interesting here, too? What? There are two pentacle cards and a wand card. There's no sword card, and there is no cup card. And those would deal with mental and emotional faculties. Here, it looks to me like maybe there are some physical issues that are happening with Biden that we should be concerned about, but I don't see a mental component here. Do you think we have to do a yes or no? I don't know. I don't know either, but I don't mind doing one. Let's do one to see, but I'm not sure I'm going to... I, I really like this in saying mm -hmm. one thing for certain. Physically, I feel like he has some issues Challenge. and challenges, mm -hmm. and he's going to be a lot slower. Mentally and emotionally? The Knight of Wands could also just be about... Uh, his ability to just project power without necessarily being active in any particular endeavor. So the idea that he has a persona and whether that persona really does say he's the man for the job could be present in this idea of it reversed. And but pentacle cards are health cards, physical body cards, because it's earth. And so that's why I'm leaning that way now. I'm thinking more of the physical nature. Do you want me just to be the one, or... Um, um, we can both shuffle this one. So, yes, no. And woe be to the Nine <laughs> of Pentacles if it shows up again! What the <laughs> heck? Gee, you almost wonder if you want to do a meditation on the Nine of Pentacles. Why does it apply to, you know, this situation so much?
All right. Color them up. <laughs> Let me color them this time. Uh, could I? Okay. I don't want my card spent. <laughs> I'll let you start with the reading, though. I knew it was going to come up this way because that gives it a sense of ambiguity that the first reading had in a way. Well, it did have ambiguity. It did talk about physical health issues. And we can almost see this here. So is Biden mentally and physically fit enough to serve as president in 2025? And again, looking at all the cards here, what's lacking? Swords and cups. Yeah. So yes. it seems like it's physical. Let's throw the cards out there and I'll let Mr. O get started. And it started. is leaning towards no. It is leaning towards it no, mean he's it's not. not. Yes, though. But I think it's more about his physical fitness. Totally. Here we go. We've got the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands is upright. The only ace we had was in the middle, and it was the Ace of Wands, upright. And finally, the Page of Pentacles, upright. Well, what I see is... He has to really work maybe with a sense of knowledge. His doctor or something like that is implied with that page of pentacles. But in general, he has burdens. He has some things that he has to shoulder and that he may have to shoulder mostly on his own because it's him. It's not like he can wear an exoskeleton to stand and walk better or to not stutter or whatever it is. Physically, it's going to take a toll on him, you know, it, serving out his term, which makes me think, could he serve out a full term? That is the question. But, you know, if Kamala was going to be the running mate, well, was, was going to be the choice for taking his place anyway, then what if Biden had to retire? What if? So I'm just saying, if he didn't have to serve, I'm wondering if he will make it. But I think here he will get off to a good start. He could get off to a good start. But also here, I think right from the get-go, he's got to take good care of his health. He's got to be mindful of his health going forward. And, you know, this is going to, because this is going to take a lot out of him. As a presidency does to anyone. Yeah, we see how much it ages people who are younger. Barack Obama, <clears throat> you know, to me, he always looks good, but he did age considerably. You could tell, you know, by the time he got out of office. And I feel here that, you know, the office takes a toll on everybody. And it even took a toll on Donald Trump physically in that. Because sure, yeah. you can kind of see it too. We aren't going to, you know, we're how should I say this, judge his mental or physical health here and now. So so we're bordering on 50 minutes, so I think we should wrap this up and say it. that, of course, we are going to do a corollary reading for Republicans, the candidate, the convention, etc. Um, we want this one to kind of marinate in your mind a little bit, maybe. Please feel free to give us any feedback at all on this video you can comment or you can write to us at our gmail that's tft tarot for today at gmail.com or you can leave a comment on the youtube uh, right as i mentioned um, and of course uh what else would you say i would just say i would just sum it up this way i mean as i look at the questions that we had um i think democratic voters are leaning towards Biden still. I think the swing and undecided need some convincing and they're open towards their choices still. 
Um, I think that outside <laughs> forces are causing some issues here and maybe behind some of what has been going on. Uh, how would Biden do running against Trump after all the drama? I thought it was like he would he would have some challenges. It's not a done deal that he would necessarily win, but it certainly seemed like it because of that devil there, too, that I maybe know. he would be able to overcome this. He would be able to possibly well, We did that. not explicitly cover the idea of uncommitted uh, voters, and of course that could actually weigh into the idea of outside forces, but we think it's probably maybe kind of negligible to some degree. I did cover swinging undecided voters. In uncommitted, that. I said. They're the same. Undecided is uncommitted. Okay, but I was thinking mostly of the people who are You're just talking about Palestine people. Palestine as their reason of They're uncommitted or they're undecided or they've decided already. We're... Yeah, picking, maybe. yeah I okay. don't know about that. So, um, but if you're talking about non-voters, that's a whole other issue. It is. <laughs> yes, way too many it is. Um, and so finally, wh how would another candidate do against Trump? We really saw it not too well. It might be just a, a very difficult climb for them. They had the chariot reversed in that one, yeah. I remember. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and finally, will he drop out of the race before the convention? Not likely. What will happen at the Democratic convention? Kumbaya, one way or another. And finally, is he mentally and physically fit enough? We really think his physical fitness is maybe the issue, even more than the mental. So that's it for this particular look into uh, our political fortunes with the future. <laughs> we haven't solved any world problems or U.S. problems here, but hopefully we've given you something to think about. All right. All right, everybody. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.